Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Now in this video we're going to learn how to use colliders to block a character and we'll learn how to use triggers to fire level events such as opening closed doors. Just go ahead and download the project files up here in the top right or download them from the description below and let's learn about colliders right now. Before we get started, there are a couple of objectives I want you to keep in mind as we work on this. So by the end of this video, I want you to know the difference between a collider and a trigger. I want you to know how to collide objects together or know how to block objects with a collider. And I want you to know how to use triggers for events such as opening a door. Now, on the left here, you'll see a video that's showing what we'll implement in terms of colliders where the ball is hitting certain obstacles and cannot move past them. On the right, you'll see our trigger example where a door is opened once the ball gets within a certain range of the door. So with all that said, let's jump right into the tutorial and get started. Okay guys, welcome to the editor. And before we begin, make sure that you download the project files from the description below. You will get a Unity package and then you create a new project and just double click the Unity package to import it. And then go to the scenes folder and open our main scene here. Okay, now once you have that done, the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and add a collider and a rigid body to our player here, which is going to be this ball that we're going to roll around. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a sphere collider, and we don't have to change anything for that. And the next thing we're going to add is, of course, that rigid body we just talked about. Now that we have those two components added, I'm going to go ahead and hit play and show you that what should happen now is the ball should just fall through the ground here. And that's exactly what happens. Now that is, of course, as you can guess, because we don't have any colliders in the scene. So the first thing I'll do now is click on our level here and I'll make sure that our ground is the one selected. Um, and then I'll hit the add component and I'll put a box collider here. Now if we hit play again, our ball now doesn't fall through anymore. Okay, so now if we really want to make our level uh, make more sense and actually you know have op obstacles and things we can bump into uh, we can use these three obstacles here and go ahead and add box colliders to them so I'll start with this one add a box collider and it'll auto detect the uh, size of it so we'll do that again for these two and okay so now if we were to drive our ball into these it would collide with them so that's all we have to do for the collision setup on these Okay, so let's go ahead and create our player controller now. So I'm going to the scripts folder here, and I'll just hit create new C sharp script, and I'll call it player controller. Now, if you'd like an in-depth explanation of this player controller, you can go ahead and click on the video in the top right card, and it's a video all about how to create your own player controller. But for now, let's just go ahead and write this one up really fast. Basically, all it'll do is use our rigid body to push the player around. Okay, so, Let's make a fixed update function here. And in here we'll record our input. So we'll have a move horizontal uh, float. And we'll get the horizontal axis. So this is a string horizontal. And we'll do the same for our move vertical. Vertical. Okay. Now that that's all done, let's go ahead and create a vector 3 movement that will represent our direction and force. So vector 3, move horizontal on x. We don't want to move it all on y. And our move vertical on uh, z. Okay, perfect. So now let's just write rb.addForce movement times speed. And our speed is just going to be an attribute we'll put up here that's a public float. So public float speed. And I'll set it equal to about 10. And actually I'll go down to 7. And then over here we'll do a private rigid body RB, which will be our reference to our rigid body so that we can actually add force down here. Okay, so now in start. We can do rigid body equals get component rigid body. Okay, so basically what we do here is, and since there's another video on this, I don't want to go too far in depth, but basically there's a float here that's going to record our horizontal input, uh, which is basically our A and D keys, 
and our vertical input, which is our W and S keys. Then we want to change it to a movement vector. So we do a vector where uh, on X we're going to move be, uh, using our A and D keys, and on the Z axis we're going to move using our W and S keys. Now with rigidbody.addForce, we're just going to add that force with that direction, and we're going to multiply it by this speed that we have here just to uh, modify how far, or I guess how fast our ball is going. Okay. And of course we use this get component call in start because we want to have a reference to the rigid body attached to this game object so that we can actually add force to it. Okay, so moving on, let's go ahead and open up our Unity again and try adding this to our player. So let's add components and type in player controller. And I'll hit save on the scene and I'll test it out. And looks like that's working correctly. But notice how our player is a bit choppy. Okay, let's go to our rigid body and let's just change this interpolate to say interpolate. We'll save that and hit play. And the ball's movement is no, no longer choppy. And let's test out if we can hit these colliders. So boom, and boom, and boom. So we get that physics like uh, simulation here where the ball just naturally, with this quick setup, um, we'll actually hit these colliders. Now let's see if we can do something more interesting. So we have this door here and our player <laughs> right now can get past it, but if this were to have a box collider and we try to drive our player into it, then of course uh, we just can't get through. And we want to make it so that the player can get through this, but we have this effect of the door opening for the player. So. All we have to do to do this kind of behavior is have a trigger. Now, to do that, we can just go to our level here, and we can actually add a empty object here, and I'll call this door trigger. Okay, now I'm actually going to make this a child of the door, and I'll set it's x to zero. So it's about there, and it looks like that y position is about right too. Uh, I'll drag it up a little bit, and now I'm just going to add a sphere collider here. Uh, and I'll check mark this is trigger here, and that's very important because we don't want it to be a collider. And I'll drag the radius down to about 0.29, it sounds good. I'll, I'll write a 3 in there to be a, to use a whole number. Um, so that looks about right. And so what we want is when our player drives through there, we want something to happen. And for that, we want to use a script. So we're going to write a door trigger script here that will pull this door up vertically whenever the player goes within this radius you see here, visualized. Okay, so let's hit create down here and hit C-sharp script again, and we'll type in door opener. Okay, so let's go ahead and double click our door opener here and it'll pop up in Visual Studio. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make a region up here called attributes. And again, if you don't know what a region is, all it is is a method of organization in Visual Studio that allows me to fold and unfold um, information here. Okay, so let's go ahead and write a reference to our door. So public transform door. This is the thing that's gonna move. And we're gonna have two vector threes here. One is going to be for the closed position of the door. And the other one is going to be for the opened position of the door. Okay, now I've already have some values for both of these, so I'm just gonna go ahead and type them in here. So the first one for the closed position is going to be a new vector 3.51f and 3.63f and zero. Now the reason I already know these is just because I've tested them, but you typically will have to, in a new scene, test out what values will work best for you, and you can go ahead and set them in the inspector. Okay, now for our uh, y here, we'll do a seven. And that looks about right, because we don't want to move it all on our Z, and we don't want to move it all on our X. Okay, so let me do a another variable here. We're going to call this one uh, open speed. So float open speed. And this is how fast the door will open and close. And we'll have one boolean, try bit bool open, equals false. That's basically a flag to see if our door is open or not. Okay, now, so how this is going to work is in our update function, we're going to 
have a lerp that's going to make our door, depending on if the boolean flag here is false or true, the door will smoothly interpolate to either the open position or the closed position. And this flag will be modified by our onTriggerEnter and onTriggerExit functions, which are two very important uh, mono behavior functions that come with Unity. OK, so let's go ahead and write a closed door and an open door function before anything else here. So public void closed door. And this will just set open to false. And you can probably guess what our open door is now going to do. It's just going to set the flag to true rather than false. OK. Now let's go ahead and write our on trigger enter and exit functions here, which are also going to be quite simplistic. Okay, so on trigger enter, and this of course has to be a private void, um, and then we'll do a collider in here. Notice this one is collider as a parameter, not collision. Oh. Okay, um, and so all we want to do here is obviously this this other parameter is referring to the thing that hits the trigger that is not a trigger because two triggers cannot collide with each other only a trigger and a collider or a collider and a collider so in here let's go ahead and type a check here to determine if our other thing is a player and we'll do that using a tag which I'll show you what those are in the inspector in just a second um, but to begin with we'll do other dot tag is equal to player so if this is the case then we want to close the door and that of course will set our flag here and in our update which we haven't yet written it'll do something there okay so once we enter we do want to open the door but once how do we make the door close once the player is gone and to do that of course we can just use an on trigger exit function here for uh, of course the same parameter and we can copy and paste this because it's not going to be too different. This is also going to be a closed door. Um, but this up here should be open door. Sorry about that mistake. Because we're entering and the door will open. We exit, the door will close. Okay. Now let's get to the more, uh, I guess, complicated code here. Which is going to check if our door is open and then move it over. So if this open flag is true, so if we want to open the door, then our door's position is going to equal vector3.lerp. And all this is, is it will return a value closer to a different value. So we're going to do vector3.lerp here, sorry. And we'll do door.position. And we're trying to lerp from door.position to the opened position here using time.delta time times open speed. And what this will do is make our door smoothly go up to this open position or smoothly open. So if our door is not open, so else, then we want our door's position to go to closed position. And that's all we have to change there. So if you don't understand exactly what this code is doing, basically just think of it as setting the door's position to the closed position, but doing that over this long period of time as we have it in the update function. Okay. So now we can go ahead and go into Unity and look really quick at what a tag is. So let's click on our player here and notice up here that this should be tagged with player. If it's not already, just go ahead and click player here. And all what that's going to do is let us perform some checks such as the one we just wrote in our on trigger enter and exit functions. Okay, so let's work on our door trigger here and add a door opener script to it. Okay, notice that our door is not referenced here. So I'll go ahead and drag the door into this okay and let's actually unparent the door trigger from the door so that it does not get the trigger dragged with the door and let's go ahead and hit play and see if this works correctly and it looks like our door just popped straight up here so let's go and have a quick look at what's going on there okay so to change the values let's go ahead and click on our door trigger here and in the x let's enter 7.3 and hit enter and we'll do that for the open position as well. And then in the Z's, we'll just do a negative 7.3 and a negative 7.3. So my apologies for putting the incorrect values inside of the script here. But now we should be able to test this. And the door it looks like it is in the right position. OK, so now if I enter this trigger here, we see the door slide up. And oh, <laughs> looks like we need to set a collider for our path down here, actually. 
So let's go ahead and add a box collider. But we did notice that it was working correctly. So let's try that again. We drive through the trigger and outside. So it opens and closes whenever we enter that trigger. And we can hit gizmos up here actually. And you should be able to see if we click on this door trigger here. Then we can see this radius. Once we enter it, opens. Once we exit, closes. Okay, so that's going to be it for this tutorial. And I'm glad that you joined me. And I really hope that it helped you out. And if it did, make sure to hit that like button and hit subscribe to see the rest of these tutorials that I'm going to put out every Monday and Thursday. And there's also, if you want to make your first game right now and you, you know, really want to accelerate your progress, go ahead and click in the top right here and hit this card. It's all about our course on how to create your first game. It's currently 90% off. There's a free sample video if you click that card in the top right. So go ahead and check that out. If you don't want to pay anything and you want to just start out and know everything that you need to create your first game, click that card in the top right now. And it's going to be a free ebook on all the tools that you need. Just go ahead and click on that and I will send that to you right away. So with all that said, I'll see you in the next video and have a good day.